Inferno with an IP on the CT side, Vitality on the T side. Alright, dodging the early nade. But there is still a couple of people up there. A lot of utility on the CT side for a pistol round. Yeah, it really is. Can do a lot of different delay tactics. Especially with two smokes towards that B bomb site. Perhaps not wanting to deal with any kind of a set piece over there. Waiting for any kind of sound cue that's not coming. Rez has an early angle towards brackets, towards top mid. And IP just patiently waiting. <laughs> so much waiting. A little bit of movement is, is just T's crouching around in the hallway. But the silence might be broken by just a couple of nades here. Early smoke setting up for the Molotov. Going to be trying to see if they can burn out that back pit. And already through, it's a quick trade. Spinks for Hampus, and we're in a four on four already. 50 seconds here, but Hestag, they don't know. He's inside of the smoke, and he comes sneaking out, executing one of them, nearly getting the follow-up. But Cybu got the pistol out in time, and that might be the crucial kill here. It's a cool kill for Astag, but so hard to know what's coming up afterwards. Zyru with an initial shot, and there's Dupree pouncing up over the top. Astag, awesome play. <laughs> okay. Well then. <laughs> Hello, Dupree. <laughs> That's great. Uh, I think it's such a cool play from Astag, and obviously pouncing out of it looks great living up to the ninja name, but without the information, it's so hard to know what the play is after this kill because you're you're blocked off by the smoke. You don't know where anyone has gone, and Zywu just delivers two stunning headshots at the perfect moment. One to nothing for Vitality's offense. Great stuff. And they arrived right back into the round with three Mac 10s. Run boosted Scott from Hampers. Not going to be able to get the tag that he wanted there. But yeah, that that probably, I mean, if he gets the follow up shot there, S tag as he comes down, gets the second kill, it's a completely different round. This time just didn't really work out the way that they wanted. Smoke off towards Little Pit. And they have. Already a lot of control jumping down into the pit. They are not afraid at all here. Trusting in the upgraded uh, or the rifles and the, and the submachine guns, but this tag's going to drop the bomb on Cyber, and there's already a flank coming in pretty quickly. I think Roland's already running up behind them, so they're going to be a little bit worried here on the Vitality side. This has been slowed down maybe a little bit too much. Another great find, a headshot spinks out of the round, fitting the already in graveyard, and Broland's going to be finally coming up with that flank, but it's a little bit too early, maybe. And all the smokes have cleared. All the utility for Vitality has cleared. They're stuck in pit. They've been stopped cold. This is going to be so dangerous. Can NIP set up the crossfires perfectly? Hampus with a scout kill. Still two players to deal with. Astag holding position inside the bomb site, and the op still does work. It's all tied up. NIP return the favor in round two. What a round for Mestag. Three kills, two of them headshots with the Deagle, and absolutely what they needed. That is, that's a shocking result. Look at this. The early kill here, that slows them down a bit, but I don't know. They just, could, I think Spinks must have not been able to see him somehow for the smoke there. Looked like maybe there was a bit of an opening, but that that's interesting. We were just talking about this in the last map, how the Deagles maybe don't have the same impact. This time, they definitely did. Speaking of which, five deagles across the board for Vitality. So, perhaps inspired. They want to see if they could do a little bit. Apex running away for the grenades. Catch him. Oh, no. Oh, S attack caught out in the open. Molotov, that's not going to stop anyone. Hampus has to get out of there. Actually, excuse me, they do turn around, but another stunning Deagle. What is happening in this game so far? Deagles are going to work, and Rez is all alone with three players encroaching on his position. I can't believe Dupree got that shot. That looked like there was nothing to see at all. Rez up close, and this might be the way to stop it. Dupree falling to the MP9 of Brolan and leaving just Apex here. But for a minute there, it looked like they were going to sweep it right back. Apex trying to hit the shot. I don't think he spotted anyone on top of the box yet, so... He should be dead in this round. Just not enough health left to really make this one work. And no one from NIP wants to peek. No one wants to give him any opportunity. This was a five on three for Vitality that has slipped away from some nice deagle shots. They stalled this out just long enough for Brolin to set up a long range crossfire with Rez and Pit. Apex has 12 HP. One bullet, one gust of wind is gonna end things. Yeah, just hoping, but you're absolutely right. They're not moving out of the spot. They really don't want to give anything up. So sneaking in, and it will be the round for NIP, but a moment of real panic there. Oh, certainly. Yeah, this was scary. This shot from Zywu is amazing. S-Tag gets caught. 
this shot's even more impressive. Look at the tiny gap that Dupree finds. Unreal. Resin Brolin saved the day with the crossfire. No access to the site again for Vitality. That's twice in a row now they've been stalled out at the A-bomb site. Wow, this is how the game starts. You, you know, we might be in for a, for a really crazy ride. Yeah, it gets you excited for how it might finish. Fourth round coming up. This time, though, it's just the, the Glocks mostly. P250 on dupes and Zaiwu. So a chance if they get the right opening. Wow. That's very aggressive. Not really any kind of reward for it, unfortunately. And a freeze out on his own, hoping for um, I think someone. The reward you get if you're brawling with that kind of pushdown is that you clear out logs, clear out bell, and you allow Plopsky to kind of be comfortable over at car, just realizing there's no one who snuck into an angle in a position that he wouldn't expect. Gets to sit and be comfortable with that deep angle in M4. A lot of information peaks going on with flashbangs from NIP trying to see where Vitality is congregating. It is towards mid. S-Tag likely to get first action. No reason for him to stick around. He knows the kind of weaponry they have. This just a question of staying alive and not giving up the Galil, but can fall back again and again and try and take up a new position. There we go. Hampers and S-Tag. And it's a good cleanup at the end of the round. They didn't lose a single player. So in spite of a you know, potentially bad start here for NIP, they, they swing it around. Now it's three to one in their favor. They're going to be so excited about how this is playing out. Yeah, that second round win was really a gut punch, wasn't it? Three rounds or two rounds off the back of it. So three to one in the favor of NIP. Vitality is going to have guns back in their hand. A little bit light on utility. One Galil, that's on Apex. Let's see what Vitality brings to the table here on offensive side of Inferno. It was slow in that first game that they played, and they managed to bring it back in a in a big way. So that's like count them out. Roland, a little bit of a lineup could have easily been a double there, but Magus gets to live. The grenade might still chase him down. It's real deep, but instead it's landing on Apex. So for great damage on him, 50 HP taken away by the one nade. Yeah, so technically one for one trade, but really. A lot more beat up on the Vitality side. And importantly as well, you mentioned the slow start Vitality kind of had against OG that they were able to recover from. Uh, slow start like that against NIP, just a different caliber of opponent. going to be much harder to kind of recover in this map if they have another slow start. They are really, really hoping that NIP will be a little bit more aggressive. You've seen them in a number of rounds where they're kind of lurking around, hoping for something by the boiler, up in the apartments, but... Haven't really been gifted anything yet. If they come up these halls quietly, this could be interesting. Rez turns, he hears one drop. He himself falls down, but still awkward defense from beneath. There he goes. Stax got a turn. He drops as well. Oh, Vitality have found the perfect solution at Hampus. No way to read the timing of Apex's play on Boiler. This round just straight up collapsed for NIP. Yeah, that little bit of sound being made dropping down definitely heard on the other side. And once you see one player in that position, probably should check for a second. It's not that uncommon to have that double position at the quad position side. So, yeah, wow. Quick fifth round coming up and being won by Vitality. Even though they weren't maybe all that silent coming down to the pit, it was just no defense anywhere nearby for NIP. A lot of focus on top mid. A lot of focus on brackets for NIP. Hampus was on, you know, rap side. He could have fallen back and kind of taken an angle, a deep angle towards Halls just to be able to protect that kind of a drop down play to wrap around the defense. That was the biggest weakness NIP had in that setup. No eyes on Halls. And Vitality get another round on the board. And they're still remembering that extended bomb range, even after the break, you know? The kind of mistake you could easily make. Yeah. You've been playing with one bomb range for almost 10 years. For your entire career? Yeah, and then... I thought I'm, I was but yes, of course, let's pick Changed a little bit. <laughs> All right. That's a nice camera shot. Yeah. Praise the camera, man. <laughs> it's the whole subreddit for that, isn't it? Well, let's go. Two to three. Close affair early on. Sixth round is coming up, and this tag wants to be a little bit aggressive once again with the AWP. Not too much. Could be very tricky on the CT side, but we were bracing him for that early yeah. on overpass. I was going to say, we set this one up. This was kind of one of our things to watch out for on Inferno is, is the play from S tag with the AWP, especially after we saw some, some great performances on overpass in their previous match. 
going to get it out early, and he's going to rotate over towards Car. Spam of the M4 might lure Vitality into a peek into the scope of the AWP, but not quite yet. Still a deep smoke, but that allows Brolin to rotate over and bolster the defense at the A site with four players. Plenty of time on the clock right now. But yeah, this lean towards the A bomb site is going to be a big problem for Vitality if they can't find a really clean entry. They're back to check. You can see Magus is just saying, well, you know, we don't know anything about what's happening over here. At the very minimum, we should put some pressure on it. But S Tag is here. He misses the flick. And now they have a lot of options on the Vitality side. They don't even have to run for it. They still have 40 seconds. They could slow it down, but they're going to go. When they you see, see an op opening. In, when you see an op in that position, you have to imagine that's the only player pushed up. Now, they have slowed this down enough to allow Brolin to get here in time. And they left the pre on the other side. So let's just see. He might get a kill on anyone rotating. Brolin's going to be going down. Oh, nice trade for Apex. That's the crucial kill that they needed. Now, at least it's going to be a bomb plant. And you could tell Rez is still not sure. If he runs out of this one, Dupree's going to be catching him. But they've already called a retreat. But Dupree's position is still great. He might catch Plopski. Oh, Rez jumps. And now Plopski's got a tough affair, tough decision to make. Good dink. And Dupree's got to give away the fight. Yeah, but they still got Plopski boxed in. So... Gonna come back and take a look here. Apex actually caught now. It's a little bit awkward. I guess theoretically, if he was feeling crazy, he could try and run for it, but um Yeah, that ain't happening. I, I thought I felt the same thing though yeah, after that like, kill. I thought I, I thought I saw him consider it a little bit on the screen. Not this time. Still, that is that's a good job. Especially, I guess with the call, you could almost tell they weren't quite straight rushing to be a bomb site. They were still aware that maybe, maybe someone's here a little bit quicker than we want. But they were pretty quick to make that yes, decision. Money. Yeah, that's for sure. I saw it. It's fine. Just careful, guys. Okay. Astag, yes. I think, was obviously aiming for that close peak. Maybe thinking there's going to be some kind of a sound cue at this at that point in the game with 46 seconds. Sometimes they'll throw the flashbang and just see if they can force back the defense and still commit to the A bomb site, just making sure nobody's pushed. And yeah, that's a look of a coach who's not happy with what he saw. But then, but then Hampus picks up the duelies, so all is right in the world. Yeah, that's what's going to bring them back. We sort of seen a lot of dually action at the end of the last season, so maybe maybe you're right. And it is Hampus, so put anything past him. But yeah, missing that orb shot really small small thing, but the consequence is absolutely huge for NIP. <laughs> Tied up the scoreline, and they're starting to make their way up the middle. USP on this side and Maybe potentially with Rez on the other side with this P250, it's not a lot to try and stop anything with. Popsky though is going to find the kill and make it. That's interesting. Someone else has to go back and pick up the bomb now. So the minimum will slow down the Vitality attack that's kind of already wrapping around the A bomb site. Rez now starting to make his move. He heard noise in middle. If he finds Saibu, it's really awkward again. The bomb's kind of stuck back there. So, yep. Oh, Saibu still got the shot off. Probably dead, but managed to pull the trigger anyway. Oh, good dink. Oh, good cleanup kill. Right through the edge of the wall. This round is on. The bomb is all the way back towards G-Spawn as well. They've left it. Even taking the bomb site wouldn't have mattered, and NIP steal another one. Yeah, some shouts going back and forth across the uh, the studio. That's so it, that's so interesting. Megas going down is this, they should still be able to win the round, but the problem is. Someone has to go pick, pick up the bomb, and they still want to maintain their grasp on that A-bomb site. Which they is, don't want to give up the wrap on it. Yeah. So which is in Cyber. It's impossible once NIP starts whittling them down, isn't it? You just don't have the manpower, don't have the forces. And and look, I mean, you can kind of write that one off as like a mistake that Vitality makes, just an oversight. I mean, ironically, we just kind of saw during the break those little pieces of content of in-game comms of another round on Dust2 from the previous blast split in spring where vitality did a very similar thing left the bomb all the way back and had to hustle to get it and almost lost the round yeah now for a team as well bringing in someone like spinks there's a lot of pressure on vitality you win the pistol you lose the second round you win a you win a gun round you start stringing them together and you lose that little hiccup that we just saw there against one m4 and all pistols as well this is not the start vitality wanted no definitely not they could have built so much behind this if not for uh, for for those couple of mistakes here and speaking of Spinks, he's zero for six right now, which is still pretty early on, but definitely considering the incredible performance he had on Dust earlier, you wanna you wanna see more of that. Especially maybe early on. Rez ready in case the previous gonna try and swing with that Deagle. They've got the setup for it. I mean, again, almost four people at this A bomb site. With Plopsky not up on the wall. Nice nade. 
That'll slow them down even further, and this should definitely be an NIP round. Look at the health left on three out of five players there on the Vitality side. Looked like they almost wanted to go back to the B-bomb site, but this time it is just to make sure no one's forcing and, and, and peering down Banana at Car. Towards the Opera we go, through the smoke. Astag gonna get challenged once again. Oh, he just gave up the angle. Gotta be careful not to re-peek it, but oh, this is gonna shrink the defense. They're now trapped inside the bomb site. Still overwhelming advantage of firepower with these M4s. And Hampus is forced to use the USP. He's gotta reload his weapon. There's actually a lot of pressure on this hit, oddly enough. And Astag answers the call. It's, that is so interesting, because I agree. It felt like the whole way through, all they had to make was one mistake there, and, and you know, the whole A defense would have been wiped out. Yeah. They were walking the tightrope, but they managed to do it, so... Yeah, Astag misses the timing with the AWP. Hampus out of bullets, and the M4 has to switch to the pistol. Both players stuck in the bomb site. A lot of pressure put on them. Everything was set up for that to just fall apart. You can even see how Astag, when he runs back into the bomb site, he's like, I didn't even really know where to stand up. Yeah. I like his version better. Of, yeah, it was way better. Five to three. Yeah, still keeping it really tight at the moment, but uh, certainly the money on the Vitality side is starting to become a little bit of a problem. Love some more bomb plants and love to stop NIP's economy from being this powerful because that's going to be a problem down the road as well. So let's see if they're going to be able to use some of that inside from Sonic to maybe win a fight here on Banana. That's a classic way to win rounds on the T side on Inferno anyway. But a flashbang around the corner, it's so good. And the follow-up doesn't even reload the M4, just picks up the AK, wanted to keep going. If they would have come through, Brolin would have been ready. Well, Zonica's right. Aggressive on Banana. Another opening kill for NIP's defense here at this part of the map. Maybe some follow-ups. Brolin's going to spin, spam through. Good flashbang. Forces his turn in an uncomfortable fight. Plopsky is left alone. No smoke, no Molotov. He's got S-Tag rotating over with the AWP and a full set of utility as well. Brolin's got to feel like he had he had that red or He knew what was coming. You could see him trying to turn for it, but not quite enough. He just, I think he was trying to fall back. He was like, they yeah. probably know I'm aggressive. Let me just slip back and force them to burn some time, burn some resources, clearing out close, and just kind of oh. gets caught in transition. It's going to be a huge nade if he lands the timing right. But don't hold it for too long, Dupree. He's been able to get some great shots already in the earlier series, and today with the deal as well, so don't want to be testing his aim too much either. Hampus. This makes me so nervous. Yeah, it does. I'm, I'm not Holy feeling good hell. about this either. This is all right. He's very quick to react. Ooh. That is a monster grenade. Almost gets the kill. Follow up on side was nearly enough. And now with the Molotov down as well, surely they're going to be out of time. 20 seconds. How do you get through this one? There is a third player about to be drawn over. Rez down in the pit, nearly caught with an aid in hand. That was very awkward, but now, yeah, with the damage already done, they're going to be able to clean it up. Good stuff, and especially there you see the flash assist from Rez down in the pit. So even if he's not in the fight, he's helping out Hampus anyway. Vitality's in some trouble. They've, they've been emphasizing a lot of hits early on towards this A bomb site, and they've been shut down a number of times against multiple different looks, against hops, against pistols, against M4s as well now. And again, the utility usage has been great. And Banana, they're struggling to take control of it early. They've lost, they've gone one for one a couple times. They've lost some opening kills a couple times. So not a whole lot of success for Vitality to build off in this map so far. <laughs> the kind of gesture you never want to see you in game leader do. No. I don't know. I don't... But I mean, I feel like Sonic had the right read earlier, so that's... At least they have an idea, they have an understanding of what is the, the basic dynamic here for the NIP side. Yeah, knowing is half the battle. As American cartoons have taught me. A lot of wisdom in there. What was your favorite cartoon growing up? Gargoyles. I... I know I know what that is. You know what that is. Yeah. I was about to say something. That cartoon was legit. Always a fan of James Bond Jr. myself. <laughs> it's <so> ridiculous. <laughs> it's so ridiculous when I say it out loud, but it was great. Um, it's absolutely stupid, isn't it? I'll find you the song at one point. Can't wait. Still walking into the same four-man setup over at the A bomb site, and that is the luxury. That's what. That's kind of half the reward for being aggressive on Banana to begin with. Is that you can you can make the sacrifice. You just say, All right, fine. We'll have four people here. Debris back at it again, though. It's a great shot. Oh, and Cyber's gonna follow it up. Uh -oh. Gonna be a little bit careful. Don't lose S tag as well. He's gonna stand his own ground and with a follow-up flashbang and a headshot. This is great. Even did a little pistol jiggle at the end you love to see it yeah good shooting from s tag with the deagle at least couple missed shots with the op but it's all good that was a little bit of a scary round as well if he'd gone down all of a sudden two on two with bomb planet 
Or maybe Spink let, struggling. Oh, with nine so far. <sighs> yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, again, we have almost no data to look at when it comes to him and, and vitality, so it's, good. You know, it's way too early to tell. But he is normally so confident. You want to see him play his way back into it. Like you said, it's been a rough start here on, the, on this map for the Vitality side. So maybe some of the chaos in the team is kind of getting to him in a different way than the rest of the team. Also remember, this is like still very, very early on in his career. Like he really only blew up until his time it ends here in 2022. And all of a sudden now you're trying to find a way to have the same impact with a completely different team. A little bit of aggression in banana early for NIP, but this time we're seeing the change. It's not passive at A the way we saw previously. It's S tag finding a pick deep down holes. Brolin is traded, and Plopsky can't continue the spray. Molotov is going to hold him back, which I think has to slow down this hit because Hampus is going to arrive at the right moment. Surely Saibu can't really keep he can't really keep running in there with just this little help. So he has to wait for a little bit of backup at least to try and do it. I mean it on the clock. Ooh, he gets one more headshot. That is a great shot from Saibu. He was dead already in the first battle, but somehow he's still able to have an impact on the round. Two versus three. And Dupree covering this. Rez is trying to see if he can win this fight. If he can't, then the round is definitely going the way of Vitality. And Dupree, the timing is so good, but somehow Rez is just a little bit quicker. And now that low health on Saibu is going to be a factor once again. That could be a big problem. No shot there. S-Tag trying to get the wall bang, but Apex, almost none of him showing, and he still gets the headshot. S-Tag now, one versus two with the Deagle, almost swapping it out there, baiting it out a little bit with the running, and oh, absolute chaos. He somehow wins the fight in spite of everything, but he should never be able to win this round. Maybe get Saibu as he tries to run out, but yeah, a lot of chaos in this one. Saibu able to clean it all up, triple kill at the end, basically single-handedly winning the round. Yeah, but not being able to carry any weapons forward. You're exactly right. Your superstars delivered you around. Now it's time to build off that. Vitality just kind of barely staying in this game, right? That's what it feels it like. It doesn't feel comfortable, but they are putting some rounds on the board. They're within striking distance at 7-4 to four with just a few rounds remaining in the half. Problem is the money for NIP looked pretty strong. Like, they're going to have another solid buy here. They probably have another buy behind this. Feels like if one, oops. Game <laughs> is being forced back. All right, that's a little bit awkward. Feels like in the previous round, if one nade goes through and just hits sideways, he tries to make a cross, then they might just lose the round almost no matter what because he's just so low on health. This aggression from Brolin has usually been a one for one. Now he's got good positioning, but a timing hole spot. S tag has no idea it's coming. Neither does Rez dropping down. There's the first. Rez needs more than that, but he just can't. S tag wasn't able to react in time. Hampus isolates a 1v1, but trades come out, and Vitality found a really nice timing to pop out halls. And finally, they don't have to fight four people here because, like you pointed out, they were so deep down banana. Now, they would have had a really quick rotation if that A defense would have held a little bit longer, but obviously didn't, so. They kind of back out already. And honestly, Sam was even ready for it. You see him throw that Molotov towards Quad. He's so... He wants to make absolutely sure that there's no lightning fast rotation coming through. So, great stuff for Vitality. They really needed this round. Spinks is on the board. He's got his first kill in the game. Yeah, first one's the hardest, right? Keep it up. Seven to five. And you mentioned it, the money. I mean, it's still pretty decent for, for the NIP side. They can they can probably make a buy out of the next round. But if if they can win another round behind this one, Vitality, then we're in we're in an interesting position again. This is a very good grindy half for Vitality, considering they won the pistol, lose the second round. And then they were able to respond at one point with two rounds straight and lost against an M4 and four pistols as well in the defense. So they've lost some really back-breaking rounds and managed to sustain and still find victories in a really like disadvantaged big picture perspective. Yeah, I mean, they're getting there. They're getting some, some. I wouldn't say practice because this is just a lot on the line here. But for a new team, you know, sometimes the only way to to know what the team feels like is actually play an official match. Trial by fire. Yeah, so so that's what they're getting right now. They're getting a real feel for it. And maybe sometimes, you know, running up against a, a strong team and feeling like you're getting beat up a little bit can uh, can help to to iron some things out. Another change in the defense here. S tags brought over to be early. Three players, and they're all sticking around. They're trying to set up a trap. They're trying to allow Vitality to say, this time we're not going to apply pressure. We're going to give you car if you want it, because we want you to have it to set up this late trap. There's the flashbang to clear things out. Great nade from Hampus does a lot of chip damage to three players on Vitality. 
flash around the corner. He did see just the gun barrel going to be slowly chipping away and eventually taken down to pre, but they lose Brolin on the other side. So battle is not done. Magus is practically dead already, but it is a four on four. A lot of damage on Vitality, though. Brolin's really butting his head against the brick wall with this kind of push down Banana. This has not been nearly as successful as he would have liked, and in certain times it's been a liability. Here it causes a lot of chaos on the rotation over. S-Tag's got to play a passive with the AWP. He's got the first kill as Apex walks right into it. Sabu is out there ready and waiting, and he gets one more headshot. He's going to try and open it up again, but this time Plopski's there to shut him down. 30 seconds on the clock, and the bomb is lost in a really awkward position. Spinks, though... He's the one with the health, trying to see if he do something. Magus is so low, bullet would have touched him and he would have been dead and eventually Hampus will deliver that bullet. 18 seconds and Spinks, he has to run all out. He might not even try and plant the bomb. He might almost just try and find Hampus here. 10 seconds on the clock and the bomb is still in front of him. Oh, he cruises right into a headshot and the confidence is back. That is a huge round out of Spinks. I think Hampus already in this moment wishes he had played that a lot differently. I don't know if he had the feel for what the time was left in the round or if anyone brought it up, but he could have played that in a myriad out of different ways chooses to be aggressive he's thinking he's going to catch Spinks off trying to hustle and play against the time and Spinx is ready for the angle but Zaiwu's been on point with that particular shot he hit the banger on it the they're getting something out of him now which is amazing and it's kind of it's brought them into a position now vitality where if nothing else they have they have a great foundation to build on in the second half Six rounds already. This one might be a little bit easier given the weapons on the NIP side. So a lot is being accomplished. Great chance right now for the Vitality side to even up the scoreline. Make it 7-7. Seven to seven. Oh, oh, no. oh, the Deagles are back! Absolutely brutal! Now, you are just waiting for another, another sound like that. You want to avoid it at all costs if you're a Dupree. You don't want to be walking into another Deagle headshot here. And you don't want to stub your toe for a third time in this game. This would be the third such round they lose in this fashion against mostly pistols. This time, all pistols. They're taking a deep breath right now on the T side. The other side, S-Tag is starting to push up. They're, they're going to be in there with a quick flank. Let's see how fast Vitality can get. If they slow down, they're going to get shot in the back, and that would be a disaster as well. Popski is still here. Deagle in hand, looking for his third, and he nearly got two right there. That is so much damage from one Deagle, and Rez has snuck up. Picks up a rifle, but never gets to use it. I was going to get the headshot on Brolan. Oh, it might be slipping out of their hands right at the end. They worked so hard for it. But S-Tag, one versus three, and he gets shut down by Dupree. I can't believe Vitality managed to win this round. That's so close. Plopsky played that pretty darn well. Obviously, the two headshots initially to make it possible. And even once the Molotov fades, playing at second oranges, thought he would have had more chances. Never got a clean look once they started entering into the bomb site. Those two shots are beautiful. What a recovery for Vitality. They've tied it up at seven. And the follow-up damage that he did, I mean, he, I think he almost got four kills, <laughs> even though the last ones weren't headshots. Yep. 15th round now. Cyber setting up with the AWD. Pointed out earlier, Brolin's been having a, a little bit of a tough time. He's stayed aggressive. He's trying to put on the pressure, but he's been found every time. This time, Plopski's in front, but they got to be so careful. Cyber's on the other side. <laughs> he actually gets the tag through the door. Oh, that's so silly. I feel like Zaiwu's got to be like the best opera at taking Banana on the T side. He's had so many good big moments there. Now the question is, with that kind of success over at Banana, still putting a lot of uh, emphasis on the A defense. S-Tank's going to pick up one. Rez on a pretty good re return there. At least it's a three on three. But yeah, they'd, they'd kind of taken the hit to the B defense and just decided to put three people here initially. Maybe that's going to be paying off for as the pressure is on already, and Cyber's holding that one angle. Not necessarily a hard shot, but absolutely great. The smoke gave away his position. The smoke he was trying to throw for mid, which I don't even... I think they, he, he probably should have known they were already past brackets. That smoke was never gonna, really going to do anything except give away his position for Zaiwu. Had a box in. Shadow shows that's an easy one for Zaiwu. Man, hard carry mode for Zaiwu in the opening half of Inferno. 18 kills on the offensive side. Yeah, he's such a ridiculous beast, isn't he? New season, still doing all the work, and that is a nice recovery for Vitality in the opening half. We'll see if they can... If you're on the T side, you just know any corner you turn could be... An could op be in your face. Corner. Yeah, one of the best ops in the world. Yeah. Staring you down. Dualies are out. 
For Saibu. Staring down two barrels. Yeah, just to make it worse. Got two guns, one for the each of you. I like that. Hold on. Dupree's still back there with a the flashbang, so that was just a test to see if anyone was going to react. Now they're walking up close, but if they give away the sound cue, that flashbang could absolutely end NIP. There's a little bit of a tap. Now comes the flash, and it's just a one kill. I actually like. Oh, oh my God! That is a beautiful shot. That's if you're going to use the P2000, then at least do that. Even the little bit of a tap just to pull attention yep. towards half wall to set up the flashbang didn't work out nearly as clean as he would have liked, but obviously grabbing one jumping over the half wall is a thing of beauty. One minute on the clock. Rez is going to have ample time to peek in. Look at Hampus. Hampus has found a gap. Apex is aware of the possibility. He's checking it on a timing, and now he's tucked himself safely, and he's been spotted. So they have to pick up the pace and crunch into this B-bomb site. Ooh. Apex takes the fight and wins it as well. And that defuses so much of the threat. Now they just have to worry about the main push coming in from Banana. It's Popsky getting one with the duelies that he's managed to pick up Dupree back here. Hasn't really reloaded yet. Got five bullets left. Misses one. He's still throwing them out there and picking up Popsky. That's huge res now. P215 hand and he's boxed in. Low on health and finally brought down by Magus. What a close round. Yeah, very, very close. Well done from Vitality. Good shooting from Apex. This shot, that's nasty. Even this follow-up one as Hampus comes in for the flank. I don't know if we're actually going to see it, but that was a nice shot at range as well. So good headshots from Apex really dissipate a lot of the danger in the round, and the rest of the team cleans things up. 9-7, to seven, Vitality with both pistol rounds in the map. I was getting a little bit worried watching Dupree not even reload the gun back there, but I guess he had it all under control. It's all good. Yeah, that's what he'd like you to believe. <laughs> Like, I've done the calculations. I don't really need more than three or four bullets, so it's all good. Silent boost up into the apartments. MP9s on the other side. I mean, against unarmored opponents, it should be... Uh, yeah, it's going to chew these guys up, isn't it? Just no the one problem. P250 to speak of. Don't even have the deagle threat this time around, so... Unusual amount of deagle rounds in that first half, got to say. Yeah, we'd been even been talking earlier how it felt like the Deagles had kind of uh, not, you know, lost some of their and some of their style points. And it's a little bit weird because the the last change to the gun involved spamming it, right? To so try and stop it from being just, you know, super effective at close range for, for quick shooting. But it still feels like somehow that changed the overall feel of the gun beyond that. A couple of kills this time going uh, in favor of, of NIP, so at least they're going to be able to... Do a little bit of economic damage. But this next round is where the real test will be for sure. The Vitality. They're building a pretty decent lead at the moment. 10 to 7. So three rounds and still no AWP on Saibu. That's yet to happen. Yet to come. Roland still... I mean, he had a lot of aggressive rounds. He's still not really recovered from that. Six kills, both him and Spink to the moment. So, something to look forward to as well if they can start to pick it up on their own. I wonder if he's going to be playing the mirror position, which, yeah, seems like he is at the moment. Not uncommon. If you're playing on the CT side, might as well play it on the T side and become an expert at everything down there. Keeping only one MP9 into this round on Apex. But way, way more of a drawn back kind of setup here for Vitality compared to what NIP were doing on the, T on the CT side. They were so aggressive on Banana, but Vitality happy to stick around inside of the B-bomb side. Roland's got position at car. Zawu's starting to rotate over as well. Seems like they're going to be more than happy to challenge, knowing there's going to be at least an SMG on the board. Roland looking for his fight still. That's finding an opening, and Apex risking his life to try and get the jump across there. But the fact that they get the killer arch is obviously great news. Spinks is going to pick up one there. They're all nearly in position to trade it, but we're down to 30 seconds, and that smoke goes up at a really bad time for NIP. They're actually under a lot of pressure right here. They have a couple of nades themselves, but they have to be really careful. If they get slowed down maybe one more time, even by a flashbang at this point in time, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah, and a great crossfire. Dupree's got two flashbangs. I don't even know if he'll use them. Zywu is one inside the bomb site as well, but you're not breaking through this. Not with th 13 seconds on the clock. 
Yeah, one mistake and it's done. First in is Rez, getting shot in the back already. Bomb still there, but they just can't make their way through. Five seconds and they have to plant. Not going to be possible. Cyber were able to pick up the last couple of there, but even if he dies, they cannot win the round. It was the time is the big opponent. That's a tough crossfire to break through in the best of situations. Maybe if they had four or five more seconds, that could have actually come to fruition, but just so much pressure due to the pace they had to take. This is a great shot from Rez. A good duel, but obviously traded back at the B bomb site by Sphinx at Coffins. And a good hold from Zaiwu and Dupree. Well, Sonic is, uh, is loving it. Looked a little bit stressed at earlier time, but um, it's going to give them a four round lead now. And even better, no bomb part. And not enough money either for NIP to do much of anything in this round. Apex, a little bit of a wild jump to look over. I don't think Roland saw anything there. Gun barrel right in his face. Ampus gonna get some revenge though. Yeah, Ampus is just like, all right, you're being crazy. It's really chaotic. I'm gonna take advantage of the reload. One for one in banana. There's two smokes and a flashbang recovered for NIP. They've got some armor to work with as well, and now three deagles and an M4. Defense is split much like the last round, two at A, two at B. Hampus is trying his best to keep up with Cyber on the other side. We've got 18 on Hampus, 23 on Cyber. But other than that, they just cannot keep him down. Devastating knowing you're up against this kind of an opponent, knowing that every single round, it's going to be a couple of kills for him. Ooh, timing is everything. Zaiwu is over by library, looking for this exact fight. A little bit of an off angle, takes the shot. M4 is up next, and he can't get it done. Good shot from Rez. Sphinx is now alone at the B bomb site, and three players of NIP are in CT spawn. 35 seconds to work with. Sphinx playing the exact position that he defeated Hampus in last time around, so we'll see this time a little bit more aggressive. He's going to pick up that one and he'll make his way around the corner as well. 24 seconds, and now backup is coming in, so all he has to do is stay alive. Make sure this stays a one versus three, and that it's not somehow a chance for Plopsky to make his escape. Going to be a little bit of pressure on, just enough to keep his attention and make his is there. So nice well color. done, Sphinx. Nice Again, maybe not high on the scoreboard, but having a couple of really critical rounds. Yeah, it, it seems like he's gotten a little settled. These are some nice. This is a nice double kill this is a deeper more shallow angle than what we saw hampus use against him in the 1v1 clutch and obviously with that narrow of an angle it's very difficult for rez to trade in time especially up against the silencer vitality looking good they really are that's definitely in the arena i was gonna say it sounded i feel like i can almost hear the echo there yeah it's good it's the sound really tops it off doesn't it yeah makes it a little bit more impressive Somehow reminds me, oh, hold on, hold the phone, Apex wanted to continue the spray, but it's just a one for one headshot, bro, and quick to react on that one, and Nade, a little bit of damage, actually a fair bit of damage on the Sphinx, that's not bad. Yeah, it looked like he was going to take a step out of position to avoid most of the damage, but that's not the case. Smoke is cleared in mid, which means this setup uh, is a bit risky, they do have Magus watching at the wrap side corner. Ooh, Zaiwu missed a quick shot. They don't get baited into Dupree's M4, and NIP is going to be happy to force back the danger, at least for now. Rez trying to improvise a little bit of a spray. Can shoot through that window at various odd angles, but you got to remember there is a canopy out there that you're kind of shooting into. Rez backing off the middle. 50 seconds. Going to be joining up with the... Almost the rest of the team. Some aggression coming out from the CT side, and it's Saiwu around the corner. S-Tag asking for a bit of a boost. They do get a lot of damage on the Saiwu, but they're down sub 40 seconds, so they need to make up their minds. There's three people defending this bomb site. It feels like Vitality have this one almost in the bag. Yeah, that's a tag as well on the res from Zaiwu at that half wall. They're going to get re-aggressive. Good time for it. Good flashbang. Sphinx with a double kill. zaiwu has gone down, but it doesn't matter. Round's over. 20 seconds on the clock. S-Tag, this would have to be so unique. There's almost no way, right? He's just looking all over the place. Dupree's right behind him. And that is a nice kill. I've, I can't even really believe it, but it, it feels like the first round of aggression is obviously that's frustrating enough on its own, but the follow-up coming back as they're trying to set up in the last 30 seconds is... That's too much to handle. You could tell NIP were not ready for it. Three, excuse me. I can... I can't count. I promise. Yeah. I swear. Just only when you really put some effort into it all. 
How, my, how about, my brain how about, was on the 12 from the previous round before the victory got added in. You know? All right, I see how it That's is. That's what I'm gonna go with. How about the time, Jason? Are you able to? You got that? Uh, got that I'm down? Usually pretty good. Yeah. Sometimes there's a uh, there's some mistakes made. Happens to the best of us. I'm I won't lie. 25 kills on Saibu. That's uh, yeah again devastating to be up against. And vitality making this look really really impressive. It's another thing though to really think about. You know, even if it's just the one change of Sphinx, it's still hard to know how that affects the overall map pool of the team. And that's if you want to win tournaments, right? That's that's how you have to do it. You need you need that deep map pool to be able to compete against FaZe and Navi and all the rest. Magus, a little bit of a miss there, maybe, but some good counter grenades coming out. Roland to get the opening kills around. They're standing on top of Dupree. I don't even know what's happening. All of the kills inside the of the smokes, and finally, Spinks a bit of a return. The bomb, though, is down in front, so is that enough for them to actually win the round with what an absolutely chaotic round? Oh, and up you need to find a way to get this bomb, though, and into the site. Plopsky's just grabbed it and jumped in, and I think now Vitality's likely going to call the save. Zaibu's only got 350 behind him. Money's fine for Vitality. It's just not pretty, and they just want no business with this, with this kind of a lead. They're going to play with the six rounds they've got and make a conservative decision and back off. So, NIP's on the board in round number two. That's that's really crazy. I I mean, it, it goes from perhaps a little bit of a funny miss from Aegis, and then, and then suddenly they're stepping on Dupree, and, and the whole bomb site's wiped out. Let's see what happens, so... They, they, they get that one, fair enough. Everyone's blind, but this is something else. It's a, it's a change of pace in a way, not in terms of timing of the overall round, because it was like 50 seconds, but in terms of like the speed once once the go signal is given, right? Like it's not kind of like trying to mess with finding a duel in the open, not trying to find like a clean entry or anything like that. It's just, all right, guys, there's a utility dump. Everyone move forward. It's good. I mean, sometimes when you do go all in like that and you get one opening, it, it just it creates enough space and enough chaos. But here we go. Eight to 13. Orp is still on Saibu, but money is starting to get a little bit low on that CT side, so something to maybe think about. S Tag has his and. We saw some really cool shots coming out from him on Overpass, so I'd love to see some of that return. Don't know if I'd pick S Tag as favorite of going up against Cyber, but not a lot of players that I would, so. Yeah, I was gonna say there might only be one. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive smokes and Molotovs down at car. Amp is delayed from top banana control. Sphinx and Apex gonna move out. There's that challenge from Zaiwu as well towards top mid. Hampus did find Apex through the smoke. That leaves Spinks alone at Sandbags and nowhere to go. Spinks making a strong stand up here. Big double for him. Sneaks out. They're ready, they're ready for him. If he keeps going, he might run into the AWP, but somehow he just makes his way past. Getting the double is already great. That's already probably enough, but the fact that he manages to escape behind it is amazing he's he had four kills in the first half he's now got 10 kills in the second half and we ain't oh, done damn. yet this is a phenomenal recovery of just eight rounds of play this being the eighth round of play so far in the second half under 30 seconds they started to make their way to the b bomb site they don't really want to go anywhere else so might as well just try and run for it 20 seconds on the clock here and speaks a lot of pressure on him all of a sudden Dupree's back here and almost jumped on by Plopsky. That would have been really awkward if he would have gone down. 10 seconds now, and a friendly flashbang set up by Sebu. That's great communication, and nothing Rez could do about it. He kind of has to stay and watch that, but that also means looking right into it. Sebu able to pick up the last kill, and that is some great defense being put up from Vitality once again. That's incredible stuff. Vitality has complete control of this map, of this game, and they're marching towards a victory. Just to be sure, that one player was Markov, right? <laughs> That's yeah, what you meant, right? Definitely. Yeah, the whole team has come alive. Round 23. And NIP really badly need to turn this around. I've got to say, I mean, Rest and Hampers both at 19 kills. It's it's not like they're they're not really doing that badly in terms of kills, honestly, on the NIP side. So 
maybe, maybe with a couple of fortunate rounds here, something could uh, could change in the momentum to favor NIP. I feel like they're even Brolin's getting a couple of more kills here. Apex risking his life to throw one HE grenade. That's that was scary. Brolin hoping to catch someone at the sandbags. It was Spinks there last time, but this time it's time we're a little bit further back. Dangerous angle to cross right now. It doesn't seem like anybody wants to either. Look at the difference in setup though. Look, think of how often NIP on this side had one playing that half wall and banana and then four people at the A-bomb side. Now we're seeing three B from Vitality pretty deep in the round. Leaving the, the Danes over at the A-bomb side. Hampus on a mission. He's found some space to work with on rap side a number of times in this half so far. Oh, the sound cue, though. That's going to get away. Zaiwu knows it's coming. Oh, a rare miss. A rare miss from Zaiwu around the edge of the smoke. And Hampus, I don't know if he spotted Apex. I don't even know if he realized that there's a second player. He's got that one as well. Hampus has cracked this open, and Spinks is left alone at B. No chance for reinforcements. He is less screwed. Yeah, there's not much he could do right now. Only thing would be the clock. If they were somehow slow enough that we're talking about like 10 seconds and he gets the kill on the bomb planter, that's the only way to win this round. It's not even close. <laughs> Hampus, three kills in this one. He probably should have had none of them. That's that's getting so much out of a, of a position that was discovered and found out and walking through the smoke against an AWP. That's a great round to call for yourself if you're Hampus. Especially knowing you've had some success getting up rap side a couple of different times in this game, but you're you're not going to come back into this game just off calls like that. That's that's like one round in the half. That ain't going to happen again. Yeah, and it's 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 a good call. I mean, even if and let's say even if he did get traded right there, probably they still win the fight against Spinks, and it probably is still a very competitive round at the end of it. But man, that looks so awkward. Library, just a weird fight happening there. But NIP will take it. 9 to 14, trying to see if they can get themselves back into this game. And a big step in the right direction, obviously, would be getting rid of that money on the Vitality side. Man, I just don't even know. That bullet looked like it should have connected. Yeah. Off just a little bit, maybe just moving. That was a phenomenal fight. I think he had heard or seen Apex at some point, so heads up play, and then obviously even finding Spinks at the end to have him boxed in. Five rounds the difference between these two teams. Vitality just two rounds away from taking the victory here on Inferno. That's a lot of nades and a great follow-up spray. They just jump right into the action. Sabu and Apex both out of it. Sphinx is still here, but that's not going to be a surprise. They know that by now. And this is a great round to have a double opening. Look at the money on Vitality. They're, they're out of funds after this round. So if NIP can deliver a really, really nice knockout punch and take one to two more guns away, force Vitality onto a save, then you start seeing a world where they can close this gap. Almost feels like at this point they're sacrificing Sphinx, hoping that, well, Mega's going to be throwing grenades, so they will actually know. It's not even like a, any kind of a fake. I was just wondering, this seems like such a thin spread in a three on five. Almost feels like it'd be worth it just to go all 3B or all 3A and just try and run for that. Ooh, flashbang. Nearly could have been the kill. Space is ready to fight if they wanted to, but they're going to be retreating instead, going for Dupree's position. No, it's time for Dupree to just save. I have to imagine he's just going to go right through Arches towards that B bomb site after the spam through the smoke and just get the hell out of there. So Vitality knows the situation their money is in. Two players at the B bomb site secure the retreat of Dupree, and Vitality is going to live to fight another day. Dupree, depending on the, the, the money, might even be able to drop a weapon over to a teammate. This might be one more decent buy for Vitality to stick in the fight. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's that might be the, the way that Vitality win this map. It's just by slowly having enough rifles to, to keep up the battle. Sean already, they could do a great job on the CT side, so not too surprising if they've managed to find the last two rounds eventually. But what a start. I mean, just one... The first battle happening on Banana, and it just heavily goes the way of NIP. That's all they needed. And I think they handled themselves well afterwards, even realizing... Yeah, uh, it's smart play to kind of secure yourself a route to save all three rifles if it doesn't go to plan, if Sphinx couldn't come up with something special there. Obviously, him surviving was pretty awesome to begin with, but being able to pull Dupree over safely is, is massive. Another timeout taken from NIP. You can see DJL being very, very... Ball round gap. And NIP, they, they can't slow it down now. They need to keep fighting. And here's that round. Remember, 
Vitality saved three rifles in the previous round. Dupree had enough money to drop another rifle over, and then Apex picks up an SMG, so they still have a very strong buy moving forward into this round. Money is completely gone at this point, and if you're NIP, you, you want to win, but not only do you want to win, you want to win where they actually have to contest, where they actually have to fight and retake and actually risk some of their weapons so that you can take everything away. Same kind of setup here for Vitality with the three people over at the B-bomb site. They've been trying to go aggressive and, and find the right timing to flash somebody into a fight here. Bomb is far back on the T-ramp, so... Let's see, and actually now that Hampers is so far pushed up, they can't really go for the pop flashes around the corner anymore. Throwing down an early smoke instead to try and slow anything down. And again, it, last time I think it was Dupree and Magus that were in the pit. They've switched that around a little bit, at least. Yeah, I think uh, I think they pulled Dupree over to help cover up the fact that Apex only has an SMG. He can do his chaotic plays. He can be the one flashed for to get information at car if they want to in the mid rounds. But as you mentioned, leaves a pretty weakened defense over here. That's a nice nade to soften up the opposition. But all five members of NIP going to be streaming up lane right now. How do you even hold this back? I mean, the Molotov is a good start, but you uh -oh. still need the uh -oh. shots. Oh, no, he didn't put it out, and he's almost dead. Simon was going to get the one and trade it immediately. They know he's down there, and eventually the wall bank <laughs> will come through. And that should be the end of the round. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like it? <laughs> oh. oh, no. That's uh, that's stressful right there. Yeah. That's pretty stressful. It was at that moment he knew he effed up. 14-11. <laughs> and again, this is this is what I touched on just when this round began. Is NIP is going to take all these wins, but like on a certain level, you would almost love for the. I mean, you never think this as a player in the moment, right? But like, you kind of want this to turn into like a doable retake scenario in some degree because you almost want these weapons to come challenged so you can take them all away so then you can completely de deplete yeah. the economy and then play around against pistols and close the gaps gap against an easier loadout but i mean if you're nfp you're just taking the wins as they come you're just yeah it's true but there is a there is a kind of round win where it's it seems believable for the other side and then they yep. they dip back in and they That's lose a, a little bit more yeah oh oh no and he, and he looks back to blind himself. <laughs> it, it all went wrong. So once, once you hit that level of panic, it's just, you know. Yeah. It's Murphy's fun. Law. Yeah. I hope that's what it is. I think you're right. I think you're I think right. I am too. Shout out to Interstellar. Campus moving up banana. Deep nade. 14 to 11. 26 round. NIP, them. They're, they're surely making a couple of people believe right now. Especially looking at the money on the Vitality side. I mean, they're at the point now where a couple of wins here and there, and, you know, they're up against almost no weapons at all. It's a, it's a good decision, though, from Vitality in this round. Again, just playing a really smart economic game where they don't refresh the full kits of utility, even around the players that have rifles, because next round, win or lose this. Like, even, even if you lose this as Vitality, you're going to have another buy in the next round as the losing bonus builds up. So everyone's kind of... You know, 2100 on Dupree and Magus, upper 2000s for Zaiwu and Apex. They've got rifles in the next round if they lose this. So avoiding that complete reset. Keeping themselves competitive. Spinks just pre-firing that is a great double kill. Goes for more and hits the headshot on Plopski. Absolutely devastating defense at the archway. He even had a teammate there that was never even needed. Proland on his own and that... You could see how much he realized was going on. He actually started pre-firing that before they even turned the corner. He was like, all right, I know. I know they're going to come. That flash landed behind me. I'm ready. Yeah, this pickup is, is doing so good for Vitality today of Spinks. Just a reminder, four kills in the first half. He's now at 13 here in the second half so far. And perhaps no sequence bigger in the entire game. Even that 1v1 clutch and that triple kill right there to put the stop to this run from NIP. Absolutely massive. What do you think it's like as like a new player coming in and getting like the uh, you've been watching Zana give his big teddy bear hugs and cheers to Astralis for years and now you're like, ooh, I get to experience it. Probably completely surreal, isn't it? <laughs> I, mean, you have, I have to imagine, but yeah, what a great uh, what a great defense being put up here. Yeah, he's like, yeah. like, I don't know. I don't, this is how I want to play the game all the time. Yeah, don't have to do great. anything. <laughs> I'm, I can just hang out and yeah, do I'm all just, that work. Just chilling. Welcome to the team, bro. 15-11. Yeah, it's really worth thinking about from an individual point of view. I mean, again, we've seen Spinks battle tested a lot on end, so it's not like a complete shock, but 
being able to do it in another team, that doesn't always really happen the same way. Like, and it can even take a long time for somebody to recover whatever was going on on, on the sort of the initial team that you get your... Uh... And we'll obviously see his comfort on like T sides greatly improve the longer sure. he's with Vitality. I think it's a lot, it's a little bit easier, I think, on the CT sides to be able to manage it within a new squad. T sides are when you kind of sometimes get lost in terms of what you're supposed to be doing at what point. Good nade damage, good damage early on to Resin Brolin. NIP already on the back foot. Yeah, they've got to be careful. They almost did catch one of them turning the corner. That would have been interesting. They're really, really close again to the pit and that hay cart. So one kill happening here in favor of NIP and this bomb site could get wiped out. It's kind of the danger of letting the T side this up close. There's Rez with the opening and Megas. He can't continue this race. I was on his own and backup is never going to get here. He's going to have to do this basically on his own and he just might. That's a strong headshot to begin with. Still 40 seconds now. Backup is coming a bit closer, but Broland's the first one through the smoke, and they're going to be able to find Zywu. That's that's a huge round right there. Look at the movement as well from Zywu, though. After that first kill at the default plant boxes, just shifts into the bomb site, so someone wrapping around couldn't see him. Might have given him an opportunity for a second kill. Unfortunately, it doesn't come to pass, but does buy his team an extra five seconds. They ain't going for this. Money's fine for Vitality now after that previous round from Spinks. And three rounds away is NIP, trying to play for overtime instead of a victory. Yeah, which in itself, I mean, that would be... That'd actually be really cool to see both teams tested in overtime, if we can get that. It's another one of those rare experiences that, as a team, you want to try and see how that feels. Sai was at 28 kills. So again, just sneaking up there. So ridiculous. Broland's going to run far away from that bomb. Nice, goodbye. And it's 12 to 15. They're getting there, slowly but surely. Oh, yeah, I mean, when you're that close to the bomb site, there's no... That defense comedy, like, it, it either works or you, you get wiped out. Yeah. 28th round coming up. Oh, they still have a lot more money than I thought, even yeah. now, Vitality. No, Vitality's done such a good job with their money throughout this half. It's super impressive, some of the decisions they've made. Standard stuff. Utility towards top banana. This time, no one from NIP following it up too aggressively. Berlin just now making his move. Three defenders here, including Zaiwu's op. Yeah, he's ready for it. Berlin just back around the logs down there at the bottom of banana. Got to be very, very careful. Ooh, now he's outside of the range of the scope. Molotov will certainly force him out, so at least they're going to know and put some more pressure on, but they managed to escape. I'm, inter I, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that that Molotov is thrown towards Tree, but Zywu didn't have the information. He could have held that angle with the AWP and really shut down Brolin as he escaped. Still another chance here. Got to be careful if you jump on that half wall, though. Again, it is Zywu, so something that people sometimes do just by you know accident but yeah he's he's so ready if they want to come for it they are already walking out in front so he's under more threat than he realizes if they turn the corner there he's probably dead oh they're hearing these footsteps though he's been very loud in his reposition they're gonna know it that smoke is gonna hold him at bay brolin's gonna be the first one to turn the corner that missed shot is everything he follows it up with one how much more can he do a second kill is impressive from zaiwu yes unfortunately flash fire never spins a little bit late but still you saw the idea of it and bomb will be planted. Nice nade on top of S tag. That'll put some real damage behind it. And it's a four versus three for the after plant. But two of them are only just showing up for the vitality side. So even if they have a little bit of a lead in this after plant, it's not a surefire thing. They could still lose this round on the vitality side. S tag getting a shot there. Even flashed against Dupree. That's a beautiful start. Sphinx is sneaking around. Apex getting the one, calling it in. They know Sphinx gets one more to make it a little bit of a chance. They're already on the defuse now. Three seconds left in Hampus. He can't find it. It's Megaskin instead to get the kill, and it 